Ron Wiseman, who had been married for 10 years, was eager to go home to Amy. She was not only a stunning and well-groomed woman, but she was also an excellent chef and the most ideal partner for a man. Amy had mentioned the previous day that she wanted to have dinner at her place with Mike Armstrong, her new boss. She said he wanted to get to know her husband and get a feel for her family. Ron didn't see anything wrong with that and said he would like to meet her new boss, especially since the last two incumbents didn't last long and left under somewhat mysterious circumstances. The most recent incumbent quit after only a few months on the job, saying he needed to take an extended sabbatical in Sri Lanka to find himself. And the man who worked before him was found decapitated in his garage with his hands tied behind his back. Despite the fact that his surgically removed genitals were never located, the police said it was a suicide. Upon noticing the time, Ron sent his wife a text message to let her know he was on his way, and then locked his office. She responded right away saying, I'll see you soon. I cherish you. Ron bid farewell to his secretary and made his way home, making a brief stop to purchase a bouquet of roses for his spouse. He liked doing things like that to surprise her, and she liked receiving gifts of love from him. She also liked to thank him for the little gifts. Ron turned down the driveway to his house, noticing the black Mercedes at the curb in front of his house. At least this man had the sense to stay out of my driveway, Ron thought. He entered the house and saw a well-dressed man of about 45 sitting on the couch. Ron glanced at him. He was quite tall and seemed well-built, with a slight gray on his temples. He was clean-shaven, and his face seemed to have one of those perpetual smirks playing on it. He stood up with a wry smile on his face as Ron entered the room and held out his hand. Ron shook it before apologizing. He went to the kitchen and handed Amy the bouquet before enclosing her in a hug. Her face brightened as she accepted the flowers. I'll have to properly thank you for this later, she whispered. Ron kissed his wife's pretty face, placing his hand on her ass. Now be a good host and go say hello to Mike, she said. Ron kissed her again and went back into the living room. He walked over to his drink bar and offered Mike a shot of whiskey, which he accepted. The two men sat down in the living room after Ron had poured the liquor. What a wife you have, Mike said, and his crooked smile became even more noticeable. I have to agree, Ron said. She's the meaning of my life. Then I think you'll understand why I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, Mike said. Really? Ron asked. What is it? I'm going to sleep with your wife, said Mike. She's going to love it, and you're going to watch. Hold that thought for a second, Ron said. I'll be right back. He made his way to the kitchen. I'm going to show Mike around the neighborhood a little, he said. We'll be right back. Amy gave him an understanding look. Don't be long, dear, she said. Dinner will be ready in about 15 or 20 minutes. Great, Ron said. He went back to the front room. I hope you didn't tell your wife what I said. Mike said. Ron shook his head. No, no, Ron said. Let's go into my cave, okay, he said, gesturing for Mike to follow him. Mike got up and followed Ron into his office, also known as his personal man cave. Mike looked around at what was hung on the walls. In addition to pictures, there were several official commendations, medals, knives, and guns, and a few swords hanging on the wall. So you're going to sleep with my wife, aren't you? Ron asked. Mike nodded his head. Yeah, I'm going to, he said, grinning. Do you have a problem with that? I take it my wife never told you about me, Ron said. She told me you were an accountant doing research for some special task force, he said. Yes, Ron said. It's true that I'm a CPA, and yes, I do work for a joint federal and private task force, but I wasn't always an accountant. Oh, Mike said. Ron pointed to items on the wall. You know, I was in the army once. I was a scout sniper at the time, Ron said. Most of my 150 confirmed sniper kills were from 300 to 600 meters away, but I've successfully hit targets as far away as 1,200 meters. That's over a kilometer, and at that distance you never hear a shot. One second you're alive and breathing, the next you're dead. He pulled out a desk drawer and ran his hands over his knife collection. Mike wasn't very comfortable by this time, and it got worse when Ron pulled out one very large knife. I'm also perfectly fine with close-range kills, he said, holding the sharp blade where Mike could see it. There's nothing like seeing your enemy emit his last breath, up close and personal. Mike's face turned white, and the smirk disappeared. Look, Ron, there's nothing personal about this, Mike muttered. Oh, but it is Mike, Ron said. 
You just told me you were going to sleep with my wife and you expect me to watch. That makes it very personal to me. I just want you to know what you're risking. You see, I believe in the old adage that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I'm sure you understand. He looked at his watch. Oh, I think dinner's about ready. We'd better get back, he said. Mike nodded his head and watched in horror as Ron threw a knife at a thick target on the far wall. The knife hit exactly in the center before plunging halfway through. I like practicing, Ron said to Amy's ash pail boss. They headed into the dining room where Amy set a table for three for them, placing the bouquet Ron had brought home in the center. As always, she seated Ron at the head of the table, Mike to his left and herself to his right. They sat down and Ron took Amy's hand. He held out his hand to Mike. We like to say a prayer before we eat, he said. Mike gently took Ron's hand. Amy and Ron bowed their heads and closed their eyes. Mike followed suit, not knowing what to expect. Lord, Ron said, thank you for this food we are about to eat. Thank you for your many blessings for our home and our family. May you continue to bless us with your wisdom and grace, amen. I hope everyone enjoys this, Amy said, as she opened the plates to reveal a succulent Cornish hen, one of Ron's favorite dishes. I started cooking it over low heat this morning. It's delicious, honey, Ron said, taking a big bite. Don't you agree, Mike? Mike nodded nervously in agreement. Yes, it's delicious, he said. You're a wonderful cook, Amy. Ron noticed that Mike was looking at him nervously as he complimented Amy on her cooking. Don't worry, Mike, he said. I never kill anyone at the dinner table, do I, darling? Mike's face went pale as Amy nodded approvingly. Not without good reason, she said. It can get quite messy, and I really don't like having to clean blood off the tablecloth, she added. After all, it's over a hundred years old. By the way, honey, Ron said. Mike told me that he plans to sleep with you and he wants me to watch. Did you know anything about that? Did you? Amy asked. No, he never said anything to me about it. She looked at Mike. Is it true, Mike? Are you planning to sleep with me? Please, Amy, I didn't say that. Maybe your husband misunderstood me, Mike said, shaking his head. Ron pulled out a tiny digital recorder and pressed a button. I'm going to sleep with your pretty wife, Mike's voice said. She's going to love it, and you're going to watch. Mike's face turned red as Amy shook her head. What's the matter with you? Amy asked. We welcome you into our home, feed you, offer our hospitality, and this is how you repay us. Please, Mike said. It was just a joke. I was just kidding. Well, that's it, honey, Ron said. He was only joking. I don't know, she said. What's the punchline? I'm not laughing. Look, that's not what I meant, Mike said, raising his hands. Really? Is that what you said to the husband of the last wife you slept with? Ron asked. What are you talking about? Mike asked. I told you I'm a researcher. I checked you out when Amy told me about you, said Ron. According to my research, you were quietly fired from Acme Enterprises three months ago after you were named as the defendant in a civil suit for alienation of affection. The man who filed that suit was the husband of the woman he divorced after he caught the two of you naked in a hotel room. Mike lowered his gaze to his plate. Is it true? Amy asked Mike. Yes, Mike said quietly. I've done some things I'm not proud of, but that's all in the past. Speaking of the past, said Ron, I also learned that Mike's ex-wife was so tired of his cheating that she turned to a group called the Marriage Mutual Insurance Society, or MMAS. Isn't that true, Mike? Yes, it's true, he said. I even saw the videotape of the punishment she was going to give him, Ron told Amy. Pretty brutal, actually. I would have thought it would make you change your habits. But that didn't happen, did it, Mike? Mike looked at him, shocked. How do you know about that? He asked. It was supposed to be a secret. Mike, Mike, Ron said, shaking his head. I told you I'm a researcher. I have access to information you wouldn't believe. It was my task force that interceded on your wife's behalf. Don't you remember? Ron looked at Amy. After we contacted his wife, she agreed to give him a choice. Either he would accept the punishment and stay in the marriage, or he would agree to a fair divorce settlement. I guess he didn't want that humiliation, so he agreed to the divorce. Ron looked back at Mike. You know, you really dodged a bullet with that one, he said. What kind of punishment was she going to give him? Amy asked. Brutal stuff, said Ron. Mike would have been tied up and severely beaten. He would be forced to watch his wife sleep with several men. Not a very pleasant picture. Hmm, Amy asked. Branded, huh? Yeah, said Ron, right on his ass, slowly. Mike wrinkled his nose at the memory. And your group saved his ass? 
Amy asked. Ron nodded his head. Unfortunately, obviously, he hasn't learned his lesson, Ron said. Maybe we should teach him that lesson, said Amy tonight. Ron nodded his head. Maybe you're on to something, honey, he said. He looked at Mike, who was shaking his head furiously. No, please don't do this, he pleaded, shifting his gaze from Ron to Amy. Why not? Ron asked. Obviously, you didn't get the message before. Maybe we should teach you that it's not nice to sleep with other people's wives. I still have your ex-wife's number. Maybe we should invite her over to help teach you a lesson. And I have a lot of things I could use to cause you a lot of pain. Ron looked at Amy. You know, I still have that knife-throwing board in the basement. He said, What are you talking about, Mike said. You know, one of those moving boards used in the art of knife-throwing. You've probably seen them. An assistant, usually a half-naked woman, is sometimes strapped to the board. And the thrower has to get the knives as close as possible without hitting her. I think it was called the Wheel of Death. We can strip Mike naked, tie him spread eagle to the board, and see how close we can get to his balls without cutting them off, he said. He looked at Mike. Wouldn't that be fun? He asked. You know, Amy's pretty good at throwing knives, too, but not as good as me. Isn't that the board that spins? Amy asked. Ron nodded his head. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. We can place bets to see who gets closest. She looked at Mike. Oh, come on, Mike, that would be awesome. Mike jumped up from his chair and his face was white, his body trembling with horror, his eyes wide open. No, you folks are crazy, he said. See, it was only a jest. Please disregard what I stated. Ron seized him, threw him about, and pinned him against the wall while maintaining his hand on Mike's throat when he attempted to back away. Amy joined him holding a serving fork with two tines. Sorry, buddy, we're not laughing, Ron said. Please, Mike pleaded. What do I have to do to make it stop? That's easy, said Ron. From now on, you will forget any thought of having my wife, or any wife other than your own, and you'll be the epitome of professionalism. There will be no late nights and certainly no business trips out of town with Amy if I'm not there. And you'll treat every woman with the respect she deserves. That's it? Mike asked. Ron nodded. Yes, pretty much, Ron said. Just know that I'll be watching. And if you screw up, you'll pay the price you should have paid a long time ago, understand? Mike nodded his head. Good. Is there anything you want to tell us? Mike nodded his head again. I'm sorry, I really am. I will never do anything like that to anyone else, he said. Please accept my apology and forgive me. Ron looked at his wife. What do you think, darling? He asked. Should we forgive him? Well, darling, she said, we do believe in forgiveness. So yes, we will forgive him this time. Ron loosened his grip on Mike's throat. He looked at his wife. So what are we having for dessert? He asked. I made a really good cheesecake, she said. Would you boys like a piece? He Ron looked at Mike, who was shaking with terror. Well, how about some dessert? He asked Mike, who shook his head. Uh, no thanks, he said. I, uh, really need to get home. Ron noticed that Amy was looking at Mike's pants, and he lowered his gaze. He saw the wet spot on Mike's crotch and shook his head. Yeah, I can see why you needed to go home, Ron said, noticing the smell coming from Mike's pants. Go on, get out of here and remember what I said? I will, Mike said, heading for the front door. They both noticed a wet spot on the back of his pants as he headed for the exit. Can you believe he actually shit his pants? Ron asked. Yeah, disgusting, isn't it? Amy said in response. And he actually thought he was going to sleep with me? Maybe I should bring him a box of candy tomorrow, Ron laughed. Ron looked at his attractive wife as he heard the tires screech. Is it possible for this cheesecake to last until tomorrow? Ron queries. Amy gave a head nod. Indeed, she replied. Okay. Let's tidy up this mess before moving on to the upstairs dessert. What's your opinion about OP? Thanks for joining us in our stories where revenge is served hot. Please consider subscribing to our channel to ensure your next chef remains loyal. Tune in for the next one to get your revenge appetite fulfilled. If you're below 18, hold on, it's not for the faint-hearted.